The most common problem affecting the operation of a manifold set is the pistons being worn, grind buildup, and debris affecting the seal or making the valves hard to turn. In this video, we will show you how to rebuild your Brute 2 manifold. You will need the following parts and tools to rebuild the manifold. Part number 41083 is the complete rebuild kit for a 4-valve Brute 2 manifold. This kit includes all the parts needed to completely rebuild your manifold including the sight glass removal tool. For your convenience, all parts are also sold separately. You will also need part number 41118, which is the O-ring lubricant. You'll need a screw gun with a Phillips tip on a low torque setting. or a standard Phillips screwdriver. You'll need a crescent wrench or a 7 8 wrench for the retaining nuts, a quarter inch socket or a torque wrench for the sight glass tool. Optional is a can of dust remover and also an aerosol can of pass load cordless tool cleaner that you can pick up at your local home improvement store. These you can use to clean out the inside of your manifold bar. You'll also need the appropriate eye protection and hand protection. I'm using the yellow jacket part number 10057 mechanics gloves in a medium. We also have a large part number 10058 and an extra large part number 10059. When rebuilding any manifold, it is very important to make sure there's no pressure or refrigerant left in the manifold. Your refrigeration manifold may contain refrigerant under pressure. Extreme caution should be observed when rebuilding any manifold. Wear safety glasses and gloves to prevent personal injury. First check gauges for any pressure readings. If there's any pressure on your gauges, safely release the pressure before proceeding. Once your manifold is refrigerant and pressure free, with the manifold ports facing down for your safety, open all the valves completely to ensure again that there is no pressure left in the manifold. Using your screwdriver or your screw gun, remove all the handles. Now take your crescent wrench or 7 8 wrench and loosen the rotating nuts on all the valves. Remove the retaining nut, feed screw, and piston assemblies.
We're now going to take the sight glass tool and the socket to remove the sight glass retainer. Place the tool inside the retainer and using your socket counterclockwise to remove the retainer. Take a flathead screwdriver and remove the top gasket. Most generally, you will only need to replace the top sight glass gasket. Look through the sight glass and make sure the bottom sight glass is still in place and is still flat. If the bottom sight glass needs to be replaced, you'll again take a small flathead screwdriver With the flat part of the screwdriver, you'll take it along the top edge of the sight glass to remove any of the gasket material that may be caught in the threads. Once you've done that, you turn your manifold over. You can tap on the table, use the end of your screwdriver, or even a hammer and lightly tap till the sight glass comes out. This does work and the sight glass will come out. If it does not come out, do not use pressure. Continue to use the small flat screwdriver following the edge of the sight glass, turning it over, tapping it until the sight glass comes out. So again, if it does not come out, do not use pressure. If it sticks, you can use a rag, your Phillips screwdriver, and a hammer, and you can hit the screwdriver with the hammer until the sight glass breaks. It will generally break into a couple large pieces. And then what you would do is remove the bottom sight glass gasket. And then over a trash can, you'd take your canned air and blow the manifold out until all the small pieces of glass come out. Because you do not want the glass pieces to get stuck into your new pistons. Once you have all the pistons and feed screws out, then again over a trash can in a well ventilated area, you could take your pass load cordless tool cleaner and spray the manifold bar out inside to remove any dirt and grime buildup. You could do that for each bore and then follow it up with your canned air to dry out the manifold and to remove any remaining cleaner and dirt. Once your manifold's cleaned out, then what you'll wanna do is check each bore for any deep scratches, dents, or pitting. If you find any, the bars should be replaced. We'll now put the manifold back together. First, make sure the bar where the first sight glass gasket goes is cleaned thoroughly. Put in your first gasket and make sure it's laying flat. Take your new sight glass and check to make sure that there's no nicks or scratches before you assemble. Then put in your sight glass. Now take the last sight glass gasket 
And what I do is put just a little bit of lubricant on the gasket. And then put on the new retainer. By putting the lubricant on, it'll make sure when you tighten it that it doesn't stick and then crimp and bulge when you tighten the retainer. Then again, taking our sight glass tool down into the retainer. And going clockwise, it just needs to be snug. Do not over tighten because it could cause the gasket to bulge or tear. If you have a torque wrench, you can set it for 110 pounds per inch. That's what we have the production line set at. We do use a torque setting. So then visually inspect the gasket to make sure that it stayed flat and then you'll have a good seal. We'll now take the piston assemblies and place the O-ring lubricant on the pistons. This is important, especially if you use the pass load cordless tool cleaner to clean out the manifold, because that does strip out any lubricants, so we need to make sure the O-rings are lubricated when we reassemble. So put it between your first finger and thumb Screw the retaining nut up. Place the lubricant directly on the O-rings and then screw it back down and that holds the pistons in place. We're now going to insert the new piston assemblies into the bar and screw them down hand tight. Once hand tight, we're going to take the crescent wrench or the 7 8 inch wrench and tighten the rest of the way. The nuts just need to be snug. Do not over tighten. We're now going to take the two yellow handles and put them on the vapor and the charge port, or our two center ports. And you'll see you have a insert, a square insert. You need to make sure that that goes down all the way onto the feed screw. These are the old style handles. The kits will include the new style. Your kit will also include two different lengths of screws. You'll have a shorter one and a longer one. The longer one you may have to use if you reuse your old feed screws, but if you use the feed screws that are included in this kit, you will use the short one. So 
So again, your screw gun on a low torque setting. So now that you've installed the piston, feed screws, and the new handles, turn down tightly each handle in order to make a tight-fitting seal between the nylon and the brass seat. You can then open and close each of the valves to make sure that they turn smoothly. Your manifold is ready for use. Thank you for watching this Yellow Jacket technical tip video. If there are any other tech tip videos you would like to see, post them on the ideas page at www.yellowjacketuniversity.com.